while I get to work atop Mauna Kea, Jorge gets a surfing lesson from Asaf Azuri, who studies the physics of ocean waves. We are PhD comics. And we want to know why. Without letting go, get the back foot flat. And stand up, turn your body this way, and drop your butt down. There you go, that's your stance. Yeah, you got it, brother. Well, I'm working in the oceanography. In particular, I uh, study physical oceanography, which is basically trying to understand the physics of the ocean the movement of currents around the ocean and waves. I'm interested in uh, what we call seiches. Oscillations on the sea level are what, on what we call the normal modes. If you force these oscillations at certain frequencies, you can have oscillations that are very amplified within the harbor. And as a result, this can cause damage to boats that are slamming against each other or even against the docks. We just try to understand what is the mechanism that is involved in generating this very energetic station. Where do waves come from? First of all, in order to have what we call surfable waves, you need to have a large storm in the ocean, very strong wind that blows over the ocean surface for a long period of time, a very large area if possible, and over long distances. So a combination of all of these three, you'll have large waves that will reach the coast. Now, once you have these conditions, you'll have a wide array of waves, different wavelengths and heights that are inside the storm region. Once they leave the storm area, they start to be more organized. And because deep sea, these waves have a property that's called dispersion, that the longer waves travel faster than the shorter waves. Faster. Faster. Why is it that longer wavelengths travel faster? That's how the physics of this system works. Mathematically, that's what you get from solving the Navier-Stokes equations. Really? Yeah. You have to apply boundary conditions at the upper surface of the ocean and at the bottom, and then we get a solution that gives you this dispersion equation. So there's a storm over here. It's blowing. It's kicking up water like crazy. Exactly. But the longer waves kind of break out because they travel faster. They just travel faster than the shorter wavelength waves, yeah. So that's why at a beach like Waikiki, you have these nice, beautiful breaks because they all come from very far away from whatever conditions they were Yeah, in. especially in the south, the waves are more separate from each other. Yeah. But this is changing once you reach the shallow region. When this is happening, then all waves are traveling at the same speed, no matter what is the wave. What are the physics of, of surfing? Like, do you ever think about physics when you're surfing? Or? Um, I try mostly not. <laughs> and then I'll be distracted and I won't catch too many waves. But <laughs> if you take the most important forces, these are basically gravity that pulls you downward. You have the buoyancy force that's basically pulling you upwards. And you have also the drag force, which is the friction, because it goes against the direction that you're moving. So it's a balance between forces that I just told you, these three forces. How does the wave come into it? Like... Okay, so basically this is a balance that you always have when you're on a, even if you're sitting and just moving a little bit, so you have the same balance. But when you want to catch a wave, so at some, at the first thing you want to do is to obtain a speed that is equivalent to the speed of the wave. So you have to accelerate from rest and once you're starting to move with the crest of the wave in front of it, you want to use its acceleration downwards, just accelerating down the face of the wave. And at a certain point, you reach a point that you can move at the same speed of the wave, and that's when all of these forces are Sonic equal. Eight. Yeah, you don't have any more acceleration. Yeah? So the gravitational force balances exactly the drag force and the a buoyancy force or lift force. When I've done enough work, I can take a short break, a couple of hours, and just go to surf. 
That's the nice thing of living in Hawaii, you know? It's hard to beat this, right? Very hard. <laughs> <laughs> and you said your professor also serves, right? Yeah, he does surf. I never served with him yet, but... You've never asked him? Uh, no, we just talked about surf. We just never surfed together. Okay. Would that be... That would be weird. Would that be... Maybe, but... <laughs> should be fun also. All right, Asaf, let's go surfing. Okay, sounds right. good. How did you get interested in waves? Surfing is pretty popular in Israel, it's where I grew. Is it really in Israel? Israel, yeah. Waves are not that great, but they are much better than one would think for this part of the world, uh -huh. the Mediterranean Sea. My undergrad carrying my board. Everyone can tell I'm a beginner with this board. Uh, yeah, if they see the board like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they right. did pretty well. Oh, all right, cool. <laughs> Woohoo, yeah. How did you get into the study of waves? I started my PhD in the physics department, but at some point I realized I wanted to do something slightly different. So I found out about the physical oceanography division. So I thought, that's pretty nice. It's going to be application of physics to something that I connect very much with the ocean. What do you mean you connect to the ocean? I never lived more than like five, 10 minutes drive from the ocean. I always need, felt the need to be close to the ocean. You don't think about many things when you're in the water, just when's the next wave coming and what am I going to do on a wave and it's a great time to clean your head from anything else that happened before or you know it's a great distraction from reality. <laughs> <laughs> How did you pick where to go to grad school? Well it was very hard for me to pick because I was looking for a place that combines a few elements that are very important to me and the first one I wanted to find a place that has great waves because that's the thing I like most. Do you find yourself uh, not being able to go surf because you're, you're simulating waves on the computer? <laughs> not simulating, but yeah, I mean, I'm just basically analyzing data that I convert it to wave heights and uh, periods and things like that. So I'm analyzing data that is related to waves in the ocean. So doing something that is related and interests me more, you know? Uh -huh. So when I go surf, I feel like I want even more to understand what I'm doing, you know? So when you go surfing, it's, it's actually, it's research. You could think of it like that, but uh, <laughs> I try to keep that <laughs> on the desk, you know? <laughs> and when I go out in, from the water, I mainly I try to think, oh, how this is working, and try to understand better. So it's when I'm thinking more. But in the water, just, you just don't think too much, you know, just surf. Just surf. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, I'm jealous. I wish I had done my PhD here. <laughs> you can still do it here. Yeah, I can still another get one. another one. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be doing that. <laughs> no. Even for Hawaii. <laughs> oh, no.